So first off, we are starting with the flower, right? It's, you know, it's really simple. So let's get started. First of all, of course, like always, we've got to turn it into a square. So, and now we're going to fold the diagonals and then the horizontal and verticals on the other side. Now with this now, you're going to want to squash it to create a diamond base. So make sure the point is folded inwards and then just squish all your points together to create a little diamond base just like that. Let me just go over that again for you. So you're going to bring the points inwards if that makes it easier in and then just squash fold the top down. And then you've got your little diamond base. You've got four flaps. Looks like uh, an arrowhead. So now you've got this. You're going to turn it around so that the open flaps are at the top. And then, so now you're gonna to wanna to make sure the open flaps are at the bottom and then take a flap and squash fold it down. So first of all, open the layer up and then squash it down. And then repeat this for all four of the flaps. Right, so now you've folded down all the flaps, you're gonna go uh, open one of them up and then bring these outer lines into the middle, following from the bottom point here. So just line it up right in the middle, like so. And then fold it down, repeat on the other side. So you should now have this. And now what you're gonna do is make a note of where these two points are if you want you can sort of lightly fold along that line to help you out but what you're going to do is unfold these flaps bring this layer up following you know following where those corners were so then you can squash fold like so and this might take a bit of adjusting because you don't want to make the creases too prominent but you know you want them to be there Sometimes you can get lucky and just get it by guessing. Sometimes you've got to be a bit more calculated, but you should get there with minimal problems. Right, so now we've got this. I'll just show that again for you. We started off like this. We folded the flaps inwards to the center and then we unfolded and then we made a note of these corners. We pushed the top layer up and then squashed these two to the center. Doesn't matter if it's not perfectly aligned. And then you're going to want to follow that step for the other flaps, the other three. So let's do that. So now what you're going to do after you've folded these layers is turn it this way and then see these triangle flaps we're going to push it inwards instead of being outwards so what i mean by that is we're going to grab these two layers here we're going to push inwards following the same crease that it was on before so we started out like this we open the layers up and push this inside and now we can very conveniently fold this back and the triangle flap is gone because it's tucked under there, tucked over here. All right, and now we're gonna follow that for the other three flaps. Right, and now that you've followed that, you've only got, you know, practically one step left. Fold out these diamond shapes and you've got four of them, which make the four petals of the flower and kind of fold them across, kill them across. And we're gonna refine them a lot later on but for now just you know separate them out make the general shape of the flower so now the final step grab something cylindrical kind of cylindrical actually i've got this it's kind of cylindrical and um basically just use it to uh, curl out the petals curl out the leaves and yeah you should be done Now straight off it's not going to look the best but I mean you can you can take your time to curl it and really make sure that it is perfect. Now 
And there you have it, you have yourself a flower. You can refine it even more, you can make it in a different colour, you know. You can give this as a gift to someone, I don't know. So yeah, next origami thing. Right, now we are moving on to the swan. Probably the easiest in this list. It's literally going to take, you know, once you've got the hang of it, 30 seconds, you know. So, first of all, let's turn this into a square sheet of paper. Right, now you should make a diagonal crease. I've already got one from turning my paper into square. And then you're basically going to do a kite fold where you bring both of these lines into the center. Not too difficult so far, right? Look at that, first step done. How easy was that, eh? Now, turn around and would you believe, do the same thing. Bring these sides close into the center. Right, now you've got this, you're pretty much done. That will, you know, how quick was that, right? And then what you're gonna do is, you, there's there's a couple of ways to do this step, right? But one of the ways is you start off diagonal fold, right? So you fold it in half, and then you are going to fold up the really long pointy bit to make a sort of neck. So shape out the neck however you want it, however long you want it. And remember to, you know, leave excess because this top part is going to become the head pretty soon. So fold it pretty well, crease it hard because we're going to uh, turn it over and then do the same crease the other side to reinforce it because that's going to come in handy later on. Now we're going to do a reverse fold. Now what that fancy word means is basically we're going to um, pop up the, the pointy bit using these folds. And then you've got your neck. Let me just go over that again for you. So we started out like this. We made our folds and then we used those folds to open up the model, push out the really long pointy bit and lo and behold, We've got ourselves a swan neck, boys and girls. Now, final step, it's pretty much the same thing. You're gonna reverse fold. So first of all, you're gonna shape out what you want the head to look like. I'm saying about there for the head. So you're gonna fold that quite hard. Go on the other side, reinforce that fold, just like that. And then you are gonna want to open up this fold and use the creases you just made to push it out. Let me go over that one more time. We started like this. We use the creases that we made to push it out. And then all we need to do is squash the model a bit to flatten it out. And there we have a swan. Now I'm gonna show you an advanced tip that not a lot of people are gonna know, but for this head right, if you wanna go even further than normal, you can do a crimp fold, right? Basically, you are going to fold the head inwards and then back outwards. I might be thinking, so corner you madman, what do you think you're doing? Well, I'll show you. So, now that you've got this right, you've folded it in and then out, you're going to unfold and then open up the bottom here and then use those creases to go inwards and then back outwards. I mean, you could do it without the crimp folds at the start, but there you have it. You've made yourself a little beak for your swan. Now that is a step up that's going to show you, apart from the rest, there's a little bonus tip for you there. If you're making an animal and you want the head to have a bit more detail, you can just push it in and then out. You've got a snout, a nose, a beak, whatever. So there you have it. That is your very own swan. Next model. Now finally, we're going back to the roots of origami Japan. Yes, it is the crane. The one and only, the traditional. It's what everyone thinks of when you say origami. It's the one thing that you should definitely know how to do. No matter how old you are, who you are, whatever, you need to know how to fold this thing. Apparently, if you make a thousand of them, it grants you a wish. I don't know, you know, believe how much of that you want. But yeah, today we're folding one, not a thousand. So, again, we're going to turn this sheet of paper into a square for the final time. Now, remember when we made the flower? Of course you do, because you've watched the whole video up to now. What we did was we did both diagonals, we turned it around horizontal vertical, then we squashed it in to make a diamond base we're gonna do that again so you know if you were following along you should you should be a master at it by now oh and pro tip right if you ever feel stuck you can re-watch the video pause it slow it down whatever if my hands get in the way comment oh it's a corner your hands are in the way i'll take them out next time i'll you know i'll run you through what you've got to do in the comments just leave a comment if you're ever unsure on what to do and i'll be more than happy to help out because you know what's the point of an origami video if you can't make the origami right that is the whole point of a tutorial, to show you what to do. And if it doesn't do that, it's a bad tutorial. Right, 
Now, remember, we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the, for the flower. We're going to fold inwards and squash. I'm not going to go over that. You're, you're all pros. I know you are. You're all quick learners. And then I'm going to bring both of these sides in to the center. Now, what we're about to create from this is called a bird base because guess what? You use it to fold bird models, such as this crane. Wow, fun fact. So now you've got this, you're going to use the same principle that we used for the flower, except it's on a slightly bigger scale. You're going to make a note of these two corners, right? Unfold. Bring this layer up near the top, right? Like so. And then where those corners were, you are going to take these flaps and squash them towards the center, like so. And now refining it a bit, you should have this as a result. Let me just go over that one more time. Exact same principle as a flower, you know, nothing's really changed. You're gonna make a note of these two corners and this time you can do a hard crease because that's what you're gonna end up with. Hard crease, you know, go up and then squash the sides together. It might take a bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, honestly, it's gonna come in so useful for the origami stuff. It's, it's used so much. Right, you're gonna repeat that for the other, um, Three flaps. Why did I have to count that? I'm actually going insane. Oh wait, not three. One. F oh my god. I am going insane. Right, so now you're going to want to repeat that for the other side. We've only got to do this twice now. Right, now I'm going pretty quick. My models are a bit shabby. You can take your time. Perfect it, you know. Make it your own. Make it perfect. Make it you, okay? That sounded weird. I don't know what I was trying to say. Just go with it, okay? Now we're going to do the same thing. I'm gonna bring up flap and then squash the sides. Now we're almost done again. Wow, would you look at that? That was easy, wasn't it? So, at the bottom, you'll realize we've got two little legs here. So, what we're gonna do is thin out these legs by first of all uh, folding these two sides inwards towards each other. And now, this is a traditional model, right? If you want to make the flapping model where you can pull the tail and the wings move you're gonna want to miss this step out right don't thin the legs out just keep them the same and then for the rest it's exactly the same procedure okay so i'm gonna fold these little things in towards each other while we're doing this another fun fact the first ever origami i made was a boat you know like the one at the start of it that the kid loses and his arm gets bit off sorry for the spoiler but um yeah don't know why I said that. So now we've got this sleek, elegant looking thing. Doesn't this look professional? Wow, look at you, you're Robert J. Lang already. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take one of these legs and fold it up like so, right? And now we're gonna do the exact same thing we did with the swan. We are going to open up and do a reverse fold. So we're gonna use this crease that we just made and push this layer out. Right, so when we push it out, we're gonna fold it in and squash it. And you can adjust this, you know, whichever angle you want. Let me just go over that again. So we started off here, we fold it up to make the crease, we open up the layers, use the crease, fold up. There we go, bish, bash, bosh. I'll never say that again, I'm sorry. And now we repeat on the other side. It should be a bit easier now, you've got the hang of it. So we fold up like so open up the layers and there you have it you've got the tail you've got the head you've got everything right now sorry about that the last step the last steps sorry pick whichever um flap you've folded the neatest and you're gonna use that for the head for me it's this one right so i'm gonna do the same with it on the swan you know literally the exact same we're gonna fold down to create a crease right Again, you can reinforce with the other side if you want to. I reckon I'm fine. And then you're gonna open it up. You use the crease to push down. Then let's refine that a little bit. And there you go. I'll do that one more time for you. We've got the flap, we'll open it up. We'll use the crease, we'll push it down. Done, right? Job done. Would you look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the complete final step, take these wings. Yes, they are wings, pull them them across slightly and you'll get a little you know a little squash a sort of rounded effect in the middle here and uh, yeah you are good to go 
for your crane. I mean, you can pull this out as much as you want to pull it out, really. It's up to you. And uh, yeah, you now have a, an origami crane. Hooray! If you want the flapping one, leave this part out where you thin the flaps, do it normally, and then if you hold onto this and pull the tail up and down, the wings should move. That is all the models done. I really hope you found this useful, you know, if not with the models, then at least with some basic principles of origami, the reverse folds, the squash folds, the bird's base, the, the diamond base, you know. I hope you actually learned something from this. And uh, yeah, see y'all later.